hello hunker downers or if you're a hunker downer at this point because certainly I'm out the house uh, but if you've tuned into my channel before you know uh, my name's Colette I'm a black seminarian at the interdenominational theological center uh, so today I decided to visit Oakland Cemetery um, a lot of our ancestors are buried here uh, in Atlanta, some of the founders of what we think of as Black Atlanta today. So I do believe in ancestral worship and the whole spirit of Sankofa, which uh, translates to go back and get it. And by go back and get it, we mean go back and get the wisdom and traditions and all of those things that have carried us through. So I wanted to share with you this book see if I could turn my camera around. I think it's worth investigation. Like, uh, we have to keep in mind that when we were brought to these shores, we came with a, a culture um, and a belief. My own ancestor um, was probably a, a, a Catholic practice, Catholicism. Her name was Margaret Cornish, and she may have been about eight years old when she first reached these shores she was one of the first of the enslaved to be brought over in 1619 and the same is true for a lot of our ancestors they had they they um they had a belief system which is one of the reasons why they were able to easily convert to christianity um that's a whole nother lesson we, we can get into that deeper at another time but the point that I'm making is that um, systemic racism that's a part of our society and that teaches us that anything that uh, our culture is rooted in is bad is one of the reasons why we really don't understand ancestral worship in a way that is acceptable to Christianity. But if you think about it, we, we believe uh, in ancestor worship anyway. Like when, whenever we refer to having a guardian angel when someone has, has died, or you know, if you're one of those people who lost your grandmother and you believe that she speaks to you in dreams, if your church um, has a plaque dedicated to the founders and that has, has their images in the stained glass, uh, communion itself can be thought of as ancestral worship. So um, there's that. But today I'm here at Oakland Cemetery because I want to venerate Bishop Wesley Gaines. In addition to being a student of the ITC, I'm a graduate of Morris Brown College. And Morris Brown College was founded by the African Methodist Episcopal Church. So during this difficult time, I decided to seek some answers from or inspiration and peace and all of those things that I need to relieve my stress right here at Oakland Cemetery where our ancestors who founded Black Atlanta are. If I can't draw my strength from them, I don't know what I would do because uh, we all we got. So uh, I think it's worth bearing in mind that uh, what our ancestors went through. So I parked my car right here in front of the uh, African American burial grounds and this in fact is a picture of Bishop Wesley Gaines and his wife Julia so like I said Morris Brown was founded by the AME Church here in Atlanta and Bishop Gaines was a minister author and founder of the college and it's important to know University Center which is a, a consortium of historically black colleges and universities of uh, the consortium even though Morris Brown is no longer an official member, Morris Brown College was the only college founded by African Americans uh, in the city. Like they, they did it by themselves. They raised the money, uh, talk about save ourselves, that's what they did. And what I'm showing you right now is the Confederate burial ground. So all these tombstones that you see right here, this is the Confederate uh, burial ground. And that obelisk that you see up there, 
is a statue that's dedicated to the Confederacy. And even this monument that you see here, oh, and let me also add that uh, Oakland Cemetery was a, key, a strategic point during this uh, Civil War and the capture of Atlanta. Uh, yeah, so that's important. <laughs> that's important too. But uh, we're coming up on this statue right here. And what this statue is, this statue is a monument to the Confederacy. It's the Lion of Atlanta. It's the final resting place of 3,000 unknown Confederate soldiers, right? And I'm showing you that because I want to contrast the strength of our ancestors. I want y'all to really think about that. Like, what must life have been like for Bishop Gaines and his wife Julia and all of the other persons that were interred here and some of them just happened to be slaves. Now a little bit about Bishop Gaines. Bishop Gaines was born a slave and you can see you saw in the picture that he was a pretty large S, right? He I mean he wasn't a tiny man. But as a child he was really sickly. So he was born I believe around 1840. He was a really sickly child. So he spent a lot of time um, indoors, and somehow he learned how to read. Um, and his owners understood how smart he was, and because of that, uh, they allowed they allowed him to learn the Bible. So he developed a faith life early on in his uh, life. Um, so what, what more can I say about his story? So he started his faith life even while he was enslaved. And he was born in South Georgia uh, and sometime shortly after the Civil War he made his way to Atlanta. And uh, at some point he comes in contact with Joseph Woods, the founder, well, the founder of Big Bethel AME and um, Henry McNeil Turner who was uh, who started out a chaplain uh, for the uh, Union Army um, who was going throughout the South following the Union Army and all of at the time they were considered contraband who were following the Union Army because after Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, all those slaves who could make it to the Union lines were declared technically free. So what ended up happening is there was an army of the enslaved following the Union Army and they had to do something with these people. So they had chaplains like Henry McNeil Turner who, uh, was not only recruiting the former enslaved or freedmen is the term we'll give them, uh, these freedmen recruiting them into the Union Army, they were also teaching them how to read and teaching them the Bible and all of that. So that, uh, that is one way that Henry McNeil Turner was able to establish a foothold for the African Methodist Episcopal Church. So here we are in front of Bishop Wesley John Gaines. Yeah, I was right. He was born October 4th, 1840 and ordained an elder May 1866. So this would have been right at that time that Henry McNeil Turner makes it to Georgia. And Henry McNeil Turner understood the need uh, for ministers. So he, he was, um, recruiting people into the AME church left and right left and right and matter of fact a lot of people were upset with him because they didn't think that he was being um, choosy enough so to speak he didn't care he saw a need and he wanted to fulfill it so that's Bishop Wesley John Gaines so my mission today is to just take a moment and light 
a piece of sandalwood to ask Bishop Gange for his strength and perseverance and to cover us. So we're just going to take a moment of silence. And I also want to take just a piece from his grave home with me. So I'll have a piece of him. Well, not a piece of him, but. There's a geography to this thing called race, and we know that the geography of race still impacts us today as we look at health disparities um, and the systemic reasons why black or people of color really are dying at higher numbers. African Americans were um, basically disrespected. They couldn't even have respect in death. So what they did was put together uh, drive to get to build their own cemetery and that's how we have Southview Cemetery on the west uh, side the southwest side of town so a lot of our ancestors are built there because they demanded respect same as we have to do today ain't nothing new under the sun we gotta we, we have to tap into our reserves that strength that perseverance everything that they had god is enough he gives us enough so we just have to know that we know that we know that we know that god is enough